the first question that often crops up is, um, are there any decent books? Or are, there, are there, you know, do you recommend any books that we can that I can look at and use to support me and my practice? And the answer to that question is no. <laughs> there are loads of books out there, um, and there are a handful of really, really very good books. But those very good books are, are meaningless to a beginner, and you need to have had some instruction with a teacher uh, before you can get some goodness from those books so that they can help you on, uh, further along on your journey. And then the, the other books, most of those are kind of like Tai Chi for beginners and they don't really, um, they don't really give you anything over and above what you would get from me. Um, in fact, often they just give you less or different. And so because it's most likely to be different, you're best not looking at them because then you're going to be causing confusion. Not that they're wrong, it's just that the, they'll have a different approach to you learning and developing and practicing. So that's the answer to that question. Um, but for those that are interested in those more advanced books, uh, do let me know. Um, the next thing actually I wanted to mention was practice. Yes, so you often I'd get questions about practice. When or how should I practice? And the answer is every day, if you can, um, as much as you can. But actually 10 minutes a day can be enough, especially when you're starting because you're just covering a few things and we kind of build and build and build on that progressively. Um, so the further you get through it, then the more you benefit from doing longer. But certainly to begin with, even like three minutes per go can be enough to start to um, concretize what you're learning. Because what you're trying to do is um, take some information that you've been given and store it in what we call muscle memory. You're trying to learn, you're trying to teach your body, trying to train your body something completely new, something completely different that you haven't done before. It's a bit like learning to play the piano. You know, you go to a half hour piano lesson every week and then you spend um, some time every day practicing what you've learned because it's in your head. What you've learned is in your head, but actually it needs to be in your body in order to play the piano. And the same applies more so in fact with Tai Chi because it's all about the body. That's the instrument that you're playing. So you'll get some stuff, you'll have a go at it with the body, but the practice is the thing that will really uh, help you. Um, so there's a third question that often crops up and that is breathing. Often people say, well, what about the breathing? Um, and the answer to that question is, uh, I'm, I'm not really going to cover in detail the breathing, certainly from the start, but we will get into that as we, as we progress. Because the most important thing for you to do whilst you're learning is, is to breathe um, in whatever way works for you. And as you start to move your body, as you start to move your body through the Tai Chi exercises, your body, you will naturally start to breathe um, at least similar to the way in which you should be breathing. Uh, and so you'll get closer and closer and closer to that. And once that starts to happen, once you start to get the basics of the movements, then we'll start looking at the breathing. 